hot end clogs that aren't in the nozzle, carbon fiber that's given you some, well, struggles, and some bed leveling and first layer woes. All this and more. Printfix Friday, episode 120. This is the last one of 2023. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you are new and just got your first 3D printer for the holidays, or you're, you know, you like it here and you didn't get your first printer for holidays, but you want to help people that got their first printer for the holidays, make sure to leave a like, get subscribed, let us know what's the favorite printer in your fleet. I'd love to know my favorite printer right now that we're screwing around with is that Chidi X plus three. I really like that printer. It's got some quirks, but it's been a lot of fun to play with Input Shaper uh, and have a bunch of fun. We got some great fails for you guys coming up. We are here to help you get printing with purpose. So let's jump right into it. This one's a fun one. We have a story here with this. This is from Discord member Allison. She says, so I'm at a bit of a loss to what is happening or what to try next. My Prusa Mark III S has been working really well lately, but then today it's all gone rather wrong. I cannot get any filament to load any longer. I've taken it apart more times than I can choose to remember, and still I am not getting anywhere. The extruder separate motor is taking the filament in as usual, but then it seems to stop pushing the filament once it gets the PTFE tube. For those that don't know, Prusa's have a bit of PTFE tube, but it does not go into the hot zone. It's just to kind of help direct the filament down into the hot end. She's changed the PTFE tube, she's changed nozzles, including a completely brand new one just to try, cleaned the debris from the Bontech drive gear teeth, and adjusted the idler screw. The only thing she can't do is adjust the drive gear itself because the screw on the drive gear is stripped. So uh, we start asking, is the filament cut at an angle? Yes, it is. Can you remove the hot end and feed filament? So I'm, I'm attempting to figure out is the hot end itself having a clog and can filament feed cleanly without the hot end in the way? With the Prusa Mark 3S, you can just kind of drop out the hot end and put it off to the side while still leaving it connected. Just don't do that very long because you no longer have cooling for your heatsink and you will heat soak it. So be very careful and do not do this if you are not comfortable. If you are not comfortable doing this, there are other ways to check. You can actually pull the stepper motor off and just try running it for a while to see if maybe the stepper motor is broken. Well, the stepper motor worked perfectly fine. There was not any issues at all. And in fact, when she removed the nozzle itself, she could feed right through when she disabled steppers. When she pulled the hot end off, it appeared the hot end is the problem because now the filament was able to feed completely through the extruder with no issues at all. And I said, okay, if you can drop the nozzle and check the nozzle, see if the nozzle is clear. And if you have a brand new nozzle in there, we know it's not the nozzle, which means there is probably something else stuck. This can happen if you don't pull out your filament when you're doing a filament change. If you leave it sitting in the cold side for the MK3S or Mark 3S, it will basically create a little blob that will get stuck in that PTFE tube or specifically in the cold end of the printer. While she even changed that PTFE tube, it was stuck between the PTFE tube and the actual heat block. There's a little bit of space there. It's not a bunch, but it is enough for a clog this size to create some pretty big problems. About a seven millimeter long fleck of filament appears to have been the entire nightmare. And I said, yep, I'm gonna use this one next week because I definitely wanna show this off. I have had this happen more than my fair share of times. And the best way to pop these out in my experience is to either undo your nozzle and push it down and out or up and out up through the top of the hot and it kind of just depends on how your hot end is built the only time you can't do that with these is with a revo with the revo even though e3d probably will tell you not to do this uh there aren't many other ways other than uh a blowtorch a heat gun heck even a hair dryer 
to soften up that filament so you can push it down and through. If you use an Allen key or a hex key that has an OD of two millimeters or less. So we prefer the 1.5 personally, just because we know that even things that are tight tolerance are going to be larger than 1.5 millimeters and just kind of use that as a jam rod to push things through. Now, there are companies that make specific rods for this. In fact, I've had some for years, got them with old Wanhao printers, but I don't like using them all that much because they are steel and Allen keys are even hardened steel. So they can and will damage the softer steel hot end parts or even the aluminum hot end parts that you might have. So you need to be careful when doing this. Shoving an Allen key into your hot end is a last ditch resort and should only be used as a last ditch resort. Do not do this often. You should not need to do this often. If you need to do this often, we need to look at protocol for what you're doing and why you're going through these challenges. But I thought this is a really unique and interesting one to show off, especially because it happened to a fan. So we got to go through all of this, which if you are a part of our Discord at the $10 tier and higher via the links in that description down below, you can get assistance just like this, where I'm not just looking at a Reddit thread or a Facebook thread or something that was sent to us. We can actually have a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one and try to solve your problem right then and there. And honestly, for 10 bucks a month, that ain't expensive. That's all I'm saying. But looking at this, I have been there before and I know a lot of you newbies, especially those that just got 3D printers for the holidays, might find themselves in this position too. So if that happens, don't worry. We are here for Print Fix Friday. And if you want to submit fails or give us a call or email us or whatever, you can do that. You can email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. We're always happy to help. We got an individual here who's having some really rough resin issues. I'm not sure what happened. Supposed to be a TIE fighter. Don't plan on making any lasagna. What could have caused this? And yes, we got some pretty awesome lasagna here. This is probably one of two things. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like this is a pretty decent thing to check. One, USB. Get rid of that crappy stock USB stick that that machine came with. Throw it in the garbage or break it. Cause And break, make sure you break the NAND flash chip. That way nothing on it can ever be reused without a massive immense amounts of technology and time and money and things that just aren't worth it. This could also be the screen. To check it, let's go ahead and remove the screws on the vat. We can see there's a screw right there in our photo, but there's another one on the other side. You want to remove those screws, pull the vat off the machine, obviously clean off the build plate. At that point, we want to go ahead and do an exposure test and verify that our screen is working properly. You will want to make sure that if you kind of poke the screen a little bit, don't poke it too hard, just kind of tap it that it doesn't just wig out on you. It could potentially have a loose connector that is just barely making contact every now and then. To also be a little bit certain, you can run that same print file, but I would look at reslicing that print file, make sure you run it through UV tools and just validate and verify that your file is good. Cause this could also be just a corrupt file from saving. Sometimes it can happen. It's not a very common issue that we see, but it can happen. And yeah, nobody wants to print lasagna, but it does look like at least this lasagna is doing a full plate clean. So you don't have to deal too much with any extra crap inside of your resin vat. But it is good to go ahead and strain your vat anytime that you have potential failures like this because those failures can definitely cause issues when you go to level or at least home your machine and this nice big chunk of metal here drives into your sensitive screen. So be careful. Can I fix this? This is from the Elegoo subreddit. It bricked during a print failure and the copper wire came off. Can I fix this slash solder it or do I need a new hot end? I don't exactly know if those are the heater wires or the thermistor wires. That's the first thing you need to check. If it is your thermistor wire, just get a new thermistor. If it is your heater wire, just get a new heater. Just get the parts that you need. Unfortunately, 
these parts might not be all that easy to come by. These are similar to bamboo. Uh, in fact, the, the hot end looks just like bamboo. I'm sure that's definitely an accident. It's definitely an accident. You will have to replace the part that broke. If it is the heater, you could technically resolder it, but you would need to have wire to solder too. And normally when these wires break, they break right at the connection of where they need to be. If for some reason that thermistor is now buried in your hot end and you're unable to get it out, you will need to replace at least the hot side. And by removing that grub screw and that grub screw are just really by loosening them up, you can drop the entire hot side out and replace it should you need it. Blob of dooms can be a problem. And this printer obviously had a blob of doom. And we often say that blobs of doom are pretty much a death sentence for your heater and or your thermistor. And it's why we always recommend to have spare parts. And if you can try to standardize your printers across one standard, whether it is this bamboo clone style, whether it is E3DV6s or Revos, or maybe something from uh, Fadus or Slice or any of these companies, you want to have standardization because it means you don't have to have 10,000 spare parts laying around. You need to have you know, maybe two or three different types of heaters and maybe one or two different types of thermistors. You don't want to have a lot of stuff. A bummer and probably not repairable. If it is your thermistor, you're going to have a really bad time getting all of that. If it is the heater, you might have a little bit better luck. Best thing that I recommend here is try to drop out that hot side. Go ahead and heat it up if you can, whether you do use something like a butane torch or a heat gun. If you have a heat gun, please use a heat gun because uh, some of you go a little overzealous with the fire here and that tends to uh, tends to get a little melty when all we really want is to get the parts uh, at least free from their plastic prison. Supports stick way too much. What can I do to make my support stick less? I've tried an interface layer roof on and off. I've tried Z distance between support with one, two, and three times layer height. What am I not seeing? Picture one through five is my last attempt. Six and seven are all different attempts with different angles. Let's take a look here. So they're using, it looks like, is it grid or are we using snug? We're using snug support. Okay, well, that's not that bad. Yeah, okay, you're gonna have a little bit of an area where it's gonna be a problem. So this particular model would absolutely benefit from organic supports. And realistically, when you're printing it this close and you have such a small contact patch, the fact this even printed is uh, pretty darn good, so A plus there. But yeah, this is not an easy part to print. I can see that you oriented it pretty much the only way that doesn't involve individually supporting the tips of the fingers. I totally agree with you there. This is a time and place where you would want to use organic supports or tree supports, depending on uh, what version of different slicers that you prefer. It does look like that you are using a rectilinear grid or grid for your support there. And I would not recommend that. While it does add a lot of strength to your support, it also makes it way harder to remove. I prefer to do it at a 45 degree angle. Personally, like my support angle for how it prints. So normally support will print either forward and backwards or left and right. I want mine at a 45. It's just normally easier to grab out with a pair of pliers. Personal preference grain of salt, do what is best for you, generally speaking. But for this case, organic supports is absolutely the right option. And traditionally, if you have decent cooling, the stock settings for it seem to work just fine. You can do a little bit more or a little bit less when it comes to your support contact distance, but you definitely want to make sure that you have enough cooling. Ultimately, if your cooling is not adequate, your supports are going to weld to your part. But seeing how clean that you got the removal here and how clean this looks overall yeah it kind of is what it is another thing to look at is orientation if you're using the newer neptune printers like the neptune 4 pro plus and max they've got that massive fan on the back side and you would definitely want to angle this so those are blowing on as much of that surface area as possible so you would want to align the part 
with the travel of the build plate. That would give you most likely the best possible chance of getting the cooling that you need for this part. Best advice in my opinion here, get your tree supports, give that a shot first. When in doubt, up the cooling or change the orientation to give you better cooling for what you have. Next up, bit of an interesting one from Discord member Thomas, who is dealing with a printer that is having a hard time getting its extrusion right. And when it's working, it's looking absolutely beautiful. We got some carbon fiber being extruded and love me some real pretty carbon fiber. And one of the things I love about it is those, those layer lines just disappear with carbon. And it's a shame that it is obviously abrasive. You don't want to run it through brass nozzles and they have all the right stuff for that. But what they found is that the dry box they were printing out of plus the Bowden tube that they had on that dry box resulted in enough extra drag that the extruder itself was not able to pull the filament in. That makes perfect sense, especially when you're printing fast. We can see that even at 12 millimeters per second cubed, or 12 cubic millimeters per second, I guess is the right way to say that, I, I think, that they were still having problems. But after shortening that Bowden tube or removing it entirely and just running it directly into the printer instead of through the dryer, they got much better results. If you are running something out of a dryer, make certain the Bowden tube that you're using is not all that high tolerance. Normally, we love cap tube. It is an amazing Bowden tube. It's nice and high tolerance, and it's great for running Bowden printers. It's not great for just general purpose Bowden stuff because it's high tolerance or it's very tight tolerance means that it creates more drag than the cheap stuff. And you might say, well, Grant, why do you say to buy the good stuff? Because the good stuff has value in certain areas but the cheap stuff also has value as well. Have a bit of both. Get some cap tube, get some of the cheap stuff. In fact, we buy the cheap stuff in bulk, like 30 to 40 feet at a time, so about 10 meters at a time. And I use it liberally. It is easy to have too much Bowden tube and cut it down. It is much harder to extend Bowden tube. So in this particular case, you gotta make sure you're reducing that drag when and where possible. Do not lubricate your Bowden tubes. Please don't do that. That's a bad idea and causes problems. Not sure if my problem is a printer setting, bed adhesion, or something incorrectly set in the file. I can't tell if my main problem is bed adhesion, so the nozzle catches and drags the print, a setting on the printer, or a bad parameter set in my slice. Problem seems exclusive to the prints that have more than one segment on the base plate as the Benchy prints fine. Ender 5 Plus Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End Glass Plate right now. I have a PEI sheet coming soon. Been using a glue stick to try to help adhesion. First layer print is 200, drops to 195 after that. Bed temp is 60. Been slowing down first layer to 15 millimeters a second. Ooh, that's slow instead of the default 20, which is also kind of slow. This, it's all bed level, baby. That's all bed level. So you've got a BL touch which means you are, uh, you're running an auto level. Either one, you are getting to the extent of what your auto level can fix and it's not really able to do that. Two, your Z offset is bad. I would really like to see what the Benchy itself looks like, but yeah, it's likely going to be a Z offset problem. You want that first layer to look freaking perfect needs to look like a sheet of glass, basically, especially when you're printing on glass. And we covered Z offset, we'll card to that video so you can take a look. This is likely, stop biting me. Yeah, go away, jeez. This is likely more of a Z offset problem than a bed level problem, and you can easily adjust this, but if you are still running the wheels to adjust your bed level, get rid of them. It's time to get rid of them. When you have an auto leveling system, you no longer need the springs and the screws. And while I recognize the springs can be valuable, if your Z probe fails and your nozzle just slams into your build plate, you want to definitely at least remove those wheels for adjusting things and move it over to something like a nylon lock nut that's not gonna have a tendency to just unwind itself randomly because it chose to. But yes, this is the offset to me. You are too far away from your build plate. You want that nozzle to get 
a lot closer. I would say the better part of, God, like a quarter millimeter is what we're looking at. And also, don't feel bad. These are one of those uh, segmented either dragons or something like that. They're hard to print, especially on printers that don't have really, really good auto leveling and first layer calibration. So you'll get there. Don't worry. But don't let these issues dissuade you or scare you away from this. It's part of the deal sometimes. Sometimes the printers get angry. Every now and then you just got to turn them off and let them think about what they did. Filament stuck in the Voxelab Aquila Pro. I'm guessing that's Voxelab Aquila Pro. I need help getting a small piece of filament from my Voxelab Aquila Pro. I've already taken out the tube. We have no comments on this one yet, but it should be pretty simple. Like we talked about with Allison's issue, grab an Allen key and shove it through. 1.5 millimeter Allen key will get you taken care of lickety split, and you'll be back to printing with purpose in no time at all. And hey, if you're feeling extra zesty, you can go ahead and leave a like and get subscribed because, hey, we like giving out help around here. And if you can help us out, eh, we'll call it a deal deal bad quality prints after crash we got a sovel they got an sv06 plus for christmas a great printer honestly it is one of our top printers which we just went through our top printers for business and for consumers we'll cards that live stream so you guys can take a look it was a fun one i think you'll enjoy it and uh, the sv06 plus actually ranked in both business and consumer even though it's not clipperized You'll see why. Everything was working fine, but last night the extruder nozzle crashed into the bed after a print. I don't know how else to describe it. It was pushing the nozzle into the bed as hard as it could, and I had to turn off to make it stop. Since then, there have been holes in my print. I followed a guide, but he doesn't say how to fix it after getting the print out. I included a photo of the sample print. I've gotten so many conflicting possibilities from Googling. Any assistance would be greatly appreciated. If I need to buy a new nozzle or anything like that, I'm willing. I'm using the PLA that came with the printer, cure out a slice, and I'm using the settings included with the printer. This, it, your bed's dirty. Like, I can look at it. I can see the, the fingerprints. Your bed's dirty. Clean your bed. Clean yo bed because otherwise it looks great. And the only places that it looks like crap is probably where you've touched it. Our hands happen to be pretty oily. And when I've experienced this, especially on the edges where you tend to grab your print bed, it's most common that it's going to be something like this, where you're going to end up needing to clean the build plate. It's no big deal. In between prints, we actually spray a little Windex on, wipe it off with a paper towel, and life is good. So I would try that first. We do want to figure out why it crashed in the first place. The SV06 Plus uses a bed probe. We can actually see it right there. It's similar to the Pinda probe. It's why we call the SV06 and the SV06 Plus poverty Prusas, because that's kind of what they are. They're, they're Mark III S's, just, you know, in not check clothing. We like Prusa, but ultimately these machines are considerably more affordable. And well, if you are comfortable doing the maintenance and the work yourself, it ain't a bad deal for the money at least. But looking at this, I'm going with uh, issues with a dirty bed because the middle looks beautiful. The other edges look really good. It looks like we might, yeah, well, we got a little bit, a little bit issue over here. looks like it might be a little close along that edge but honestly I, I i would clean this bed first because it looks like we have some fingerprints so that's where i would start having a clean bed is always important you don't always have to make it i'm not going to ask you to make your bed every night but i am going to ask you to clean it and make sure that you don't have any oils or things like that from your hands if you are still worried uh, hot water and dish soap will work or a wipe down with alcohol can also work with the SV06 Plus. Otherwise, you got a damn fine first layer. So keep up the good work there. Get that bed clean. I think she'll work well for you for many years to come. Anyways, guys, this that's it. That is the last Print Fix Friday of 2023. How crazy, man. How freaking crazy. That is episode one. 120 120 episodes of print fix friday that is what two and a half years of doing this i'm excited 
2024 is coming up. A lot of people got new machines for the holidays. And if you did, let me know in the comments what you get for the holidays. And hey, glad you're here. Get subscribed if you haven't. Leave a like if you haven't. But I do want to give a huge thank you to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you. What you all do in making these videos possible and allowing us to have the flexibility to go a little crazy with these when we want to. That's all I got for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Click the videos below me. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome for the last time. Well, the last recorded video. 2023. See you on Sunday for the last stream of 2023. Take care.